Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha TV this Saturday morning. I am Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the latest headlines. As talk of a federal front grain the ground after Mamata Banerjee is swearing in finance minister Arun Jaitley calls the idea tried tested and failed concept. Parliament's Public Accounts Committee decides to take up a CAG report on Augusta Westland Chopper's issue. A strong demand for taking up the report was made at PAC meeting on 18th of May. Prime Minister Modi becomes the first Prime Minister to attend the North Eastern Council in over 30 years. Says country cannot develop if the region is neglected. And Zika virus casts a shadow on the Rio Olympic scientists call for shifting or postponing the Summer Games urged the WHO to revisit its guidance on Zika. Well, a top story, Mamata Banerjee was sworn in as the Chief Minister of West Bengal for the second consecutive time yesterday. But the main highlight of the ceremony in Kolkata was the presence of several regional bigwigs including Chief Ministers of Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi creating a buzz over the formation of a federal front. Well, after the swearing-in, Mamata Banerjee announced cabinet portfolios in the presence of media personnel. When asked about the prospects of a new front, Mamata Banerjee said that she is happy with a good beginning. It's a political get-together. Sometimes, if we have a cup of tea also, we can discuss with the political persons what we will discuss without the political situation or the economic situation. Sometimes we discussed. But the situation was very peaceful. Everybody is happy. Everybody is honored. We are also honored. I think this is a good beginning. Of course, it's a beginning for the people of the country and a beginning for all the state development work and whatever you say. I, Keshari Nath Tripathi, Governor of West Bengal, hereby appoint Honorable Mamata Banerjee as Chief Minister of the State of West Bengal. TMC Chief sworn in as the Chief Minister of West Bengal for the second consecutive time. Mamata Banerjee, who rode to power again after her spectacular showing in the Assembly elections, took the oath of office and secrecy in Bengali at a function on the arterial Red Road in Kolkata. Ami. Ami Mamata Banerjee, Isharo Allah Name Shapot Koritechi. যে বিধি ধারা স্থাপিত ভারতের সংবিধানের প্রতি আমি অকপট শ্রদ্ধা ও নিষ্ঠা পোষণ করিব প্রাইম মিনিস্টার মোদি টুক টু টুইটার টু কংগ্রাচুলেট হার হি সেড হি ইজ লুকিং ফরওয়ার্ড টু ওয়ার্কিং ক্লোজলি উইথ हर गवर्नमेंट ফর দ্য স্টেটস গ্রোথ ওয়াইল দ্য কংগ্রেস লেফট কম্বাইন এন্ড দ্য স্টেট বিজেপি বয়কটেড দ্য সেরেমনি ইউনিয়ন মিনিস্টার্স অরুণ জেটলি অশোক গজপতি রাজু এন্ড বাবুল সুপ্রিয় ওয়ার ইন অ্যাটেন্ডেন্স Jaitli assured that political differences will not be a hindrance in Bengal's development. It's a great challenge now for any government, including the Trinamool government, to put its economy back to the rails. As far as central government is concerned, we will, in letter and spirit, abide by it. every ingredient of our federal responsibility and assist the west bengal government and the people of west bengal that in no way will be impacted by the political character of the government here the 42 member tmc ministry has 29 cabinet ministers including the chief minister five ministers of state with independent charge and eight ministers of state i keshari nath tripathi governor of west bengal on the advice of mamata banerjee chief minister of west bengal hereby appoint the following persons as cabinet ministers and ministers of state for the state of west bengal prominent cabinet ministers include amit mitra subrata mukherjee partha chatterjee shobhandeep chatopadhyay farhid hakim and soban chatterjee who is also the mayor of kolkata women ministers include shashi panja asima patra and sandhya rani tudu The new ministry has 18 new faces. The event was also a rallying point for regional powers. Those in attendance at the ceremony included Chief Ministers Nitish Kumar, Akhilesh Yadav, Arvind Kejriwal. 
Lalu Yadav and Farooq Abdullah were also present. The buzz was the possibility of the formation of a federal front. Mamta Banerjee ji ko badhai dene aaya hu aur Pashchim Bengal ki janta ko bhi jo unhone pichle panch vars Bengal ki seva ki logon ne puna unko janadees diya hai Pashchim Bengal ki janta bhi badhai ki baat rahe aur Mamta ji. I think we'll support. We'll sit together, work out. And whatever is best for this nation, we will think about that. The present front is a possibility, sir? There is every possibility of any front that might come which will save India from the future disaster. Mamata's landslide win has positioned her as a possible major player on the national level. She single-handedly steered the TMC to a spectacular victory, winning 211 of the 294 seats in the Assembly, defeating the Congress left combined and the BJP. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, even as the attempts are made to resurrect the idea of a federal front before the 2019 elections, now Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley called it a tested, tried and failed political concept. However, he said that the political opposition would never affect the relationship and cooperation between the states and the centre. Lalu Prasad Yadav, while leaving the venue, said Mamta Banerjee has defeated the Sun Paribar and the Indian BJP in Bengal after Bihar. And so, a federal front is now something that will be discussed. What do you think about it? Now the struggle going on uh, in the Indian opposition as to who's the opposition of the, for the, to the BJP is not really for me to decide. Uh, it is between the Congress uh, and the so-called Federal Front. But let me tell you, the Federal Front is a tested, tried and failed idea. And on to the other big story. Well, the Parliament's uh, Public Accounts Committee has decided to take up the CAG report on the contentious uh, Augusta Westland choppers issue, apart from over half a dozen other defence-related matters. And the bullet, a bulletin issued by Lok Sabha said that uh, PAC, which is uh, headed by Congress member K.B. Thomas, has selected these subjects based on various reports of the CAG pertaining to several ministries and departments for examining them during 2016-17. The issue of acquisition of VVIP helicopters is one of the 100 subjects that the panel will overall examine. Now, BJP leader Vijay Koel and BJD's B. Mahato, uh, Mahata brother, uh, raised the issue to be taken up uh, at the first mention of the newly constituted uh, PSC on 18th of May. The VVIP, you should remember, had led to a huge controversy during the recently concluded budget session of Parliament. The panel has also decided to continue with its inquiry into some aspects of the 2G scam, Commonwealth Games scam and the issue of a burgeoning non-performing assets of uh, the public sector banks. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi began his uh, third year in office uh, with a trip to the northeast. He was in uh, Shillong to address the Northeastern Council where he hinted at a possible upgradation of the agency to the state of an art uh, resource centre. He also released a special cover and a stamp brought out by the Department of Post to mark the occasion. Modi is the first Prime Minister to attend uh, the NEC meet in over 30 years. He also dedicated a number of uh, development projects in Meghalaya. There's need to focus on issues of livelihood, skill development and entrepreneurship. That's the call Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave at the 65th plenary session of the Northeast Council that began on Friday. Modi said the country cannot develop if its northeastern region is neglected. And that's why he added that his government is doing its best to reduce isolation of the region by improving connectivity through rail, road and waterway. The government has been focusing on the development of the northeastern region through its proactive and east policy. The northeastern council should also consider focusing on issues in emerging areas of livelihood, entrepreneurship, venture funds, startups, and skill development. All of this will help in generating jobs. Minister for Development of the Northeast Region, Jitendra Singh, also said that in the last two years, the Northeastern Region has witnessed path-breaking development in all spheres of life. 
However, a lot remains to be done. There are two or three elements which we try to introduce, sir. We sought to go beyond the mandate of development and we owned the region. Whether there was a calamity or a flood or an earthquake or a violent incident, we stood by them so that the donor ministry could identify with them. Secondly, sir, we also try to be a little more innovative and visionary. For example, for the first time in the history of independent India, a region-based road corporation was established. The council meeting was attended by governors and chief ministers of all northeastern states. Apart from deliberations on ways to develop the region, various agenda items and action-taken reports were also discussed during this session. The presence of Narendra Modi made it more significant as it was the first by a prime minister in nearly three decades. Later, the prime minister also addressed a gathering of self-help groups in Meghalaya and dedicated a number of development projects in the northeastern region. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. News from Puducherry, where uh, fissures within uh, the Congress party could be delaying the process of government formation in the Union territory. Well, this after former Union Minister of uh, State V. Narayan Sami reportedly stated that he wants to be the Chief Minister of the Union territory. Now, Narayan Sami says that he has the backing of the Congress MLAs, a claim uh, denied by his own party men. However, he seems to be the top contender for the post. The Congress Legislature Party meeting will be held today to decide who will be the Chief Minister. Meanwhile, the opposition AIA, the MK, has slammed the Congress for delaying government formation in Puducherry. The party also said that if the Congress uh, did not form uh, the ministry in the next two days, AIA, the MK, would uh, present a letter to the newly appointed Lieutenant Governor Kiran Bedi to intervene. And now on to our special series on drought in the country. Well, popularly known as the Sun City, the rural areas in Jodhpur is suffering from heavy drought and water crisis. The temperature is breaking all previous records here and the crisis is worsening. Now, there have been several deaths and the tourism industry has been hit. Here is a special report. This is Paldi Mangalya village of Jodhpur. It is very close to Marwar's historical capital, Madur. Mangalya Paldi Panchayat is in the range of 10 kilometers and the population here is around 5,300. There are many stone factories where people easily get work, but most of the population here is dependent on agriculture. However, the drought this time has made things difficult. There is no water and there are no arrangements for supplying it to. No, तो जैसे आवेश योर न काटी तो उसको सीज़र पैसे हमारी पंचायत के ऊपर खर्च करना चाहिए सड़क है पानी है बिजली है इसके ऊपर डोलोमेट के लिए। In rural areas, a number of animals are dying from lack of food and water. The villagers allege that despite repeated reminders to the administration, there is no relief. The rich can afford water through tankers, but the poor rely on the Vishnu Kund that is believed to never dry up. Not only people but animals also come here to quench their thirst. It is the farmers. Who are extremely worried. इसके लिए कोई चारा का इंजाम नहीं हुआ और हमारे गोसर भी हमारे गांव में उसमें भी कोई चारा इतना नहीं आता है और नई गवर्नमेंट इसकी सुविधा दे रहा है। कार्य कोई सुविधा नहीं है टैंकर मावड़ों कौन सोड़ी कर लेंगे? कौन सोड़ी कर? सरकारी टैंकर नहीं आता? नहीं आता। बिल्कुल नहीं आता। The situation is more or Peasant leader Bhagirath Chaudhary says government is neglecting farmers. यहाँ किसानों के लिए सबसे बड़ी तो ये होती है कि तुरंत कोई रात कार्य हो तो वो उसके काम आते हैं। यहाँ आग लगने के बाद कुआं खोदने जैसी स्थिति है। Jodhpur is a popular tourist destination, but this time the heat has ensured little traffic. The administration claims it is trying all it can to ensure relief reaches everyone on the ground, but ground realities are quite different. Arvind Kumar Singh's report. For Rajya Sabha TV. And in breakfast news, time for a very short break. Up next, all the international news and sports news. Stay with us. Unless you propagate basic research in India, this country would not catch up with the rest of the world. If you want to come back, then come back as an Indian. If you want to be a foreigner in India, you will never succeed.
if we have to import a technology from America, please import it 100%. But work on developing your own technologies. Watch Eureka with Professor Khurshid Iqbal Andrabi, Vice Chancellor, Kashmir University, only on Rajya Sabha TV. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Ghatak, one of the oldest and most unique percussion instruments of southern India. You can play it not only with your fingers, but palms, wrists and heels as well. You'll be surprised, but the air inside the Ghatam reverberates, creating the musical notes. Five elements of nature, earth, water, air, fire and space make up the composition of this beautiful musical piece, which has found an apt place in most of the ancient books. Welcome back. Our international focus now fearing the Zika outbreak. More than 100 leading scientists say that the Rio Olympics should be moved or postponed. In an open letter to the WHO, the group says new findings about the virus make it unethical for the Games to go ahead. The experts in the letter have called on the WHO to revisit its guidance on the virus. The letter shows a growing gap within the medical field on what to do about the games. On Thursday, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention said that virus outbreak does not pose enough of a threat to cancel or delay the Olympics. Remember, earlier in May, the International Olympic Committee had too insisted on going ahead with the games despite the virus scare. The WHO too released a statement saying that cancelling or changing the location of the 2016 Olympics will not significantly alter the international spread of the virus. The outbreak of the mosquito-borne virus uh, began in Brazil a year ago, but now more than 60 countries and territories have continuing transmission. There is no public health reason to cancel or uh, delay the Olympics. Our recommendation from CDC about travel is a recommendation regardless of why you travel. We say if you're pregnant, don't go somewhere where Zika is spreading. So I think there is... The, the risk to delegations going and athletes is not zero, but the risk of any travel isn't zero. Uh, but the risk is not particularly high other than for pregnant women. Now, Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin has said that Russia might be forced to respond to U.S. Uh, moves in Europe, a warning that Washington's missile shield was a direct threat to his country's security. On a trip to Greece, Putin warned Romania and Poland that hosting U.S. missile shield system puts them in what Putin called Russia's crosshairs. Russia insisted that it was not making a first step but only responding to moves by Washington. Putin also voiced frustration that Russia's complaints about the missile shield had not been heeded. However, U.S. military says that shield is needed to protect from Iran, not threaten Russia. Earlier this month, it uh, switched on uh, the Romanian part of the shield. Work is also going ahead on another part of the shield in Poland. Uh, as it relates to Crimea, we consider the question closed. It's a historical decision of people who live in the Crimea. And no discussion about this issue will not be able to do with anyone. And U.S. President Barack Obama yesterday paid a tribute to victims of the first nuclear attack during a historic visit to Hiroshima. Obama also spoke to a number of survivors. In his address, Obama called on nations to pursue a world without nuclear weapons. He is the first serving U.S. president to visit to Hiroshima since the World War II nuclear attack. U.S. President Barack Obama today paid moving tributes to victims of the world's first nuclear attack during his historic visit to Hiroshima, to becoming the first serving U.S. president to visit the site since the but Second World War like nuclear attack. Nuclear Obama said the memory of Hiroshima must never fade. However, he did not apologize for the U.S. nuclear attack, the world's first nuclear bombing. Mere words 
cannot give voice to such suffering. But we have a shared responsibility to look directly into the eye of history and ask what we must do differently to curb such suffering again. Obama first visited the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum before walking to the Peace Memorial Park. He was accompanied by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Both men stood in front of the eternal flame. Obama looked somber as he offered the wreath, lowering his head and pausing for a moment with his eyes closed before withdrawing. We come to ponder a terrible force unleashed in a not so distant past. We come to mourn the dead. Obama spoke to a number of survivors and shared an emotional embrace with Shigiaki Mori, a 79-year-old Hiroshima survivor. He also called on nations to pursue a world without nuclear weapons. Nations like my own that hold nuclear stockpiles, we must have the courage to escape the logic of fear and pursue a world without them. Obama's visit comes more than seven decades after the world was first shown the potential keys to its own destruction. More than one lakh people died in Hiroshima and another 74,000 were killed two days later in a second bombing in Nagasaki. Some of them died immediately, while many succumbed to injuries or radiation-related illnesses in the weeks, months and years later on. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. News from the U.S. now and presumptive a Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump promised thousands of his supporters in San Diego that he would offer a strong challenge for the heavily Democratic California's electoral votes in the general election. However, as Trump delivered an energetic 58-minute speech inside the San Diego Convention Center, more than 1,000 protesters representing various opposition groups demonstrated outside. Donald Trump brought his message of walls and deportations to the doorstep of America's busiest border crossing on Friday as the presumptive Republican presidential nominee greeted supporters in San Diego in California. This even as one of the largest counter demonstrations against him took place right outside his rally venue. The protests were mostly peaceful but some who tried to scale a barricade were turned back by police. Police said one person was arrested. Hours earlier, speaking at a rally in Fresno, Trump said he was not anti-women and hoped to garner more support from them. We went to Indiana and won in a massive landslide, and we won with the evangelicals, and we won with the women, thank you. You know, you know we're breaking records in the polls with men. I love you too, see? They're all screaming, women love you. That's, I love women. But believe me, I love women. I love women. In the same speech, however, Trump continued his attack on his Democratic rival, Hillary Clinton, saying she doesn't look very presidential. Do you think Hillary looks presidential in office? I don't think so. And I'm not going to say it because I'm not allowed to say it, because I want to be politically correct. So I refuse to say that I cannot stand her screaming into the microphone all the time. Oh. Actually, that's why I turned it off last night. It wasn't that she was lying about me at every single corner. I just couldn't stand it. I got such a headache. Oh, please. The presumptive Republican nominee has also ruled out a one-on-one -on -one debate with second-place Democratic hopeful Bernie Sanders, calling the idea inappropriate. I heard that he was going to debate me, and then I heard that he was not going to debate me, and then I heard that he was going to debate me, and now you're telling me that he is not going to debate me. Well, you know, I, I hope that he changes his mind again. I mean, Mr. Trump is known to change his mind many times in a day. Uh, and I would, you know, Trump goes around, he's a bully, he's a big, tough guy. 
A nationally televised debate with Trump would have been a big boost to Sanders' chance in the California primary on June 7th as he bids to slow down Hillary Clinton's path to securing the Democratic presidential nomination. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. News from the French Open and a nine-time champion Rafael Nadal has withdrawn from the tournament on account of a left wrist injury on Friday. The 29-year-old Spaniard stunned Rola Garo by calling a news conference at just 10 minutes' notice to announce that he was pulling out. He had been reportedly paying with an anesthetic injection in the wrist in the first two rounds and MRI scans had shown that the injury was getting worse. Well, despite his latest setback, the charismatic Spaniard said that he will keep playing Although his participation at Wimbledon next month is also now in serious doubt. And Adal's withdrawal gives compatriot Marcel Granoles a walkover into the last 16. His exit also gives a huge boost to world number one Novak Djokovic's hopes of lifting his first French Open crown. Nadal and Djokovic were seeded to meet in the semi-finals next Friday. I have to, to retire from, from the tournament. Because I I have a, a problem in my in my wrist. I could play, but the you thing is yesterday night I start to feel more and more pain, and today in the morning I feel that I could not move much the the wrist. So I I came here. I I did the MRI and I did uh, the echography. So well, I, yeah, and. Mm, the results uh, are not positive. More sporting action now in Sportsbeat. Indian boxer Sonia Lathar settled for the silver after going down to Italian Elisa Messiano in the 57 kilogram category final of the World Women's Boxing Championship on Friday. Sonia went down 1 2 after a hard fought bout against the world number one Italian, which saw the Indian miss the world champion title by a narrow margin. The International Olympic Committee announced on Friday that biological samples from 23 athletes who competed at the London Games in 2012 had tested positive for using performance enhancing drugs. Dozens of competitors in the 2008 Beijing Games including some who were planning to compete in Rio, were also among those who were caught. Manchester United on Friday appointed Jose Mourinho as the manager on a three-year contract with an option to stay on until at least 2020. The Portuguese replaces the Dutchman Luis van Gaal, whose two-year reign at the Old Trafford ended on Monday when he was sacked two days after United won the FA Cup. Real Madrid will be aiming for a record-extending 11th European Cup and further torment their city rivals, Atletico, as they meet in the Champions League final at Milan's San Siro Stadium on Saturday. The team took to the pitch for a final training session on the eve of the big match, a repeat of the 2014 final in Lisbon, which saw Real come back from behind to win 4-1 after the extra time. Kenyan lawmakers on Friday amended the country's anti-doping laws. The changes in, in the legislation were made in the hope of avoiding a ban on Kenyan athletes who are preparing for the Olympics. In April, President Uhuru Kenyatta signed into new law anti-doping measures, but the World Anti-Doping Agency later said that the legislation still fell short of international standards. Well, that's all in this edition of news. Thanks so much for your time.